switch ints from int number flux to the right user from the user flux. Okay. So we have two fluxes here, right? So we'll go to the reactive sources. We have int number flux, okay, which is returning a bunch of uh, numbers. We have a user flux, which is returning a bunch of users. Okay. So I want to switch from the int to the number. How do I do that? Again, I'm going to use the flat map approach. There is a, I, th this is kind of the reason why I picked that analogy, because I want to make sure I convey that a flat map works pretty much the same way even there. Again, this may not be ideal, but I couldn't come up with another example, but so bear with me here. So I'm going to do a reactive sources dot int number flux, right? I'm going to get the int number flux. And then what I want to do ideally is map, and the map doesn't work in this case, but go with me here. I'm going to, I'm going to map the name, the, sorry, the number to a user flux with a filter where that number is applied. Okay, so I'm going to do reactive, reactive sources dot user flux dot filter where the user, let me get the user, where the user dot get ID is equal to this ID. Okay, I'm going to, since this is another flux, I can't map to, I can substitute a number with a flux, so I need to do a flat map. So I'm not replacing every number with a flux, I'm replacing a number with the result of the flux. Okay, so this is ID. I'm going to get the ID, and then I am going to subscribe. Okay, it's this same line. Of course, another thing I can do is, like, if I want just one, I can just do a dot tick over here. I'm just going to get the first user whose, you know, ID matches, and then I'm just going to use that. That's one way of doing it. Okay, again, not the ideal way, but I just wanted to demonstrate the, uh, the flat map operation. All right, this one, print only distinct numbers from int number flux with repeat. Okay, a couple more operators for you to know about. These are basically just examples of things that you can use. So there is an in numbers flux with repeat. Okay. Let me demonstrate that. So I'm going to do reactive sources dot in numbers flux with repeat. I'm going to do a dot log and do a dot subscribe. I'm changing things around over here, right? I'm not doing a system out of subscribe. I'm basically doing a log and I'm doing a subscribe. I have to do a subscribe because unless you do a subscribe, this thing does not get triggered. Okay, this is the, the conveyor belt switch that I talked about. Not only do you place all the people in the assembly line, you're going to have to turn on the conveyor belt. And the way to turn on the conveyor belt is by using subscribe. Without using subscribe, things are not going to work. This wasn't a question until now because we did the subscribe as the way to do something with the element, right? Visual system dot dot print element was like the default there all the time. But here, if I'm using log, I don't want to do system dot print element. So can I just skip this? What happens if I just do this? Well, this is not going to work because subscribe is what triggers the process. Subscribe is basically saying, hey, now give me, right? G start giving me items. That's That has to happen, right? You notice without that, the elements wouldn't even flow. So there is a request trigger that needs to happen. That request is happening by the subscribe method. So even if you don't want anything to happen inside the subscribe block, you still need to add the subscribe call over here at the end. And that's what starts requesting. That's what turns on the conveyor belt. So now this is uh, what we were doing. Okay, we were looking at int numbers with flux, with repeat, right? Int number flux with repeat. So this is basically a bunch of repeated values, all right? So you have one, two, one, one, three, two, four, five, and complete. Okay, so these are the numbers. And what I want to do is print only distinct numbers from here. So what do I do? I just do a dot. There is a distinct. Okay, very handy. Operators are very handy. So these are things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't remember all these operators. Some common ones you would, but um, go through the documentation and you'll find out. So you notice here, 
when one and two repeated again, it basically just ignored it. There were there was like a two second pause, and then three happened, and then it it got three. So basically, distinct is keeping track of what the previous elements are, and then if the same thing happens again, it basically just uh, doesn't use it in the new flux that it returns. Okay. All right. This is another one like print from int numbers flux with repeat excluding immediately repeating numbers. Okay, what do I mean by that? So it's okay if it repeats as long as it's not the same as the, the previous one which occurred. Like it shouldn't print the same number twice in succession, but after something changes, it, it's okay to print the same thing again. Okay, so these are the numbers. You have one, one, two, two. Ah, uh, I have to comment this on, sorry. It's actually printing from both. Okay, one, two, we get rid of the distinct. What are the actual values being printed here? So you've got one, two, one, one, three, two, four, five. Okay, so those are the numbers. If you don't want two elements to happen, you know, the same element to show up twice together. So this one, one, one should go, but here, this one is fine because it's following two. It's not the same thing. But the second time one repeats, it's immediately after the one. So that should go, but everything else can show up. Okay. So there is another operator for this, which is distinct until changed. Okay. It's like, as long as it's changing, it's fine, but distinct until it, it changes. So now the second one is going to go away. All right. It's again using the equality contract on the object. So if you're passing this for the user object, it would basically honor the equals class, the the equals method, and remove things which are equal. So that's that's basically how it works. So this these are operators. Okay. Very handy. And the best way to learn about them is to go through the Java docs. Okay. Not the very first time. It's it's not a good introduction to operators. But now that you know what they are and and you know how we can stitch them together, you can definitely look at the Java docs. And as the Java doc says, go look at the documentation. Again, I have not found really a good book that I can recommend. If you think any, if you need any reading material, the best thing would be the documentation on Project Reactor. Okay. So here, if you go to the very top of the Java doc. You have this thing here, which operator do I need? Appendix, okay? If you go there, this is from the reactor reference. It basically tells you what kind of operators to use for what kind of things, okay? What do you need for filtering a sequence? What do you need for peeking into a sequence? Handling errors, working with time, splitting a flux. So all these things, how do you block and go back to the synchronous world? So, so many things here. Again, since this is a basics course, I'm not gonna cover all the operators in depth because that's gonna take another five hours, okay? so. I'm going to give you a reference and just read through those and look at the Java docs. You should be familiar with picking the right operator, operator to use for what you need, right? At the basic level, this is all it's doing. It's transforming an incoming flux into something else. All you need is to know about a bunch of these operators so you have them at your, uh, at your disposal and then use the right operator at the right time. Okay, 